Time now for our Sunrise Smart Start. President Biden tapping Vice President Kamala Harris to lead the administration's response to challenges at the U.S. southern border. The VP will serve as the lead person and representative to Mexico and Central American countries. Joined live this morning by Washington correspondent Raquel Martin. Raquel, uh, good morning. First question to you, why is the president tasking Vice President Harris with this at the southern border? Well, we know we are three months into this administration and President, Vice President Harris has not been appointed any major policy agenda. So this is the biggest one that uh, we've seen thus far. We know that typically vice presidents are appointed something like this. We know that uh, vice, when President Biden was also a vice president to Obama, he was appointed uh, some diplomatic affairs in Guatemala. So it looks like the president is looking for Harris to take control of the situation uh, to be able to facilitate some diplomatic affairs between these uh, countries where we're seeing this migration surge and try and get at the root issue uh, causing such a spike of immigration. What is being done up on Capitol Hill to address this influx of unaccompanied minors at the border? Well, at this point, uh, lawmakers are just calling on the Biden administration to take more aggressive action. Uh, but Republicans have started introducing legislation to try and uh, undo some of what the Biden administration has done and try and reinforce some of what the Trump administration had put in place while they were in office. For one, uh, trying to make sure that those who are seeking asylum stay in their home country before they come to the U.S. border seeking for asylum. So saying they apply uh, in their home country. Uh, we know that the Biden administration did away with the state in Mexico uh, policy, which restricted uh, migrants from coming to the U.S. border. And that is why Republicans say they are seeing such a surge um, in migrants now. So they're trying in some way to try and get some legislation across the table, but uh, it's unlikely we're going to see any action. And we also know that Democrats are pushing their own immigration package. Again, there is no bipartisan consensus on how to address immigration at this point, uh, but we'll see in coming months if there is any movement in a bipartisan way. Certainly a familiar refrain and obviously a situation that will not resolve quickly. Raquel, thank you for the live update from Washington this morning. The president has indicated he plans to visit the border, but has not said when. All right, back in Rochester, back-to-back -back homicides in a 24-hour period. A man has died after another fatal shooting in the city. Ericetta Cost live at the Public Safety Building this morning with more on this spate of violence. Ericetta, good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Mark. Well, a year ago in, at this time, we were, had five homicides. We doubled that number Tuesday night. And of course, last night, another homicide occurring in the area of McGee and Dewey Avenue. A 21 or excuse me, 29 year old man was shot and later died at 830 p.m. Police haven't released his name yet. No suspects are in custody and anyone with any information is asked to call 911. Officials we've spoken to on these scenes say it's heartbreaking for for everyone, we need to find a way to make it stop. They will be having a press conference later today in response to discuss the violence on Tuesday night, last night, and just in general. We're waiting on a specific time uh, that conference will be happening. Now, also, just to give you an idea of how uh, much of an uptick there is this year, last year we didn't see the 11th homicide until April 29th, so definitely an uptick there. In Rochester, Eric Hattacost, News 8. All right, Eric Hedda, thank you for the live update this morning. Mayor Warren responding to this violence as well in a statement saying in part, the violence we are seeing in our city and across the nation is beyond, beyond reprehensible. While the perpetrators and the victims of this violence are known to each other in the vast majority of these crimes. I have directed Police Chief Harriet Sullivan to immediately implement additional targeted enforcement efforts to protect our community. This, as Rochester City Council will vote, on the city's new plan to reform the police department later today. The death of George Floyd last May led to a push to examine and redesign policing policies nationwide. Governor Cuomo introducing an executive order back in June, which ordered all law enforcement agencies across New York to adopt reform plans. Rochester's meeting is coming up tonight at 530. I'll tell you what also is uh, coming up at this hour is the sun 
uh, not too long from now, but already first light indicating the kind of day we're going to get, Josh. Good it's going to be uh, an absolutely beautiful one. Good morning, Mark. An incredibly warm day by uh, late March standards awaits. And again, there's that uh, beautiful sunrise in the making not too far off here. And uh, from hilltop to lake shore, off to a mild start, 55 in Canandaigua. Good morning to you. Good morning, Brockport. You're at 52 degrees. Again, nothing uh, short of remarkable for today. High wind watches tomorrow. Those strong and gusty winds, the price we pay for the warmth today, so get out and enjoy this gorgeous day with highs and low 70s. Clouds will gather later this afternoon. Could see a shower thunderstorm later tonight. Josh, thank you. Another check of the roads with our sunrise traffic and a broken record here for the first 45 minutes of the 6 o'clock hour. Light, uh, light volume here on the west side coming in, uh, building in a little bit over the last 15 minutes or so, but still moving nicely along 490, uh, moving well on 390 and 590 as well. So it should be a smooth ride in for your commute. Well, three people hospitalized after a house fire on Finch Street in Rochester. This happened overnight. Crews arriving around 2.30 this morning. Initial reports indicated there were people trapped up on the second floor of that two-family home. As crews arrived, a 14-year-old, we're told, jumped from a porch roof to safety. Firefighters then helped a 52-year-old and 9-year-old escape from a second floor window with the help of some ladders. All three victims are being treated for smoke inhalation. That fire was brought under control in about 25 minutes. Officials say it was one of four called in overnight. The Lilac Festival returning this May after all. The plans approved by Monroe County and the state. It will take place over three weekends in May, beginning with the Craft Beer Expo, May 8th and 9th, with socially distanced tables, the Wine Tasting Expo the following weekend, and the Lilac 5K and 10K the weekend after that. Live music will be absent from the festival. Organizers say they'll have a press conference with more information about their plans coming up April 1st. Hey, big news in Albany. State lawmakers reaching a deal to legalize recreational marijuana in New York. Assembly Majority Leader Crystal People Stokes says it will likely be printed today and could be signed as early as next week. After that, adults will be able to legally possess up to three ounces of marijuana in New York. We're also told it will allow people to grow a certain number of marijuana marijuana plants at their home. Missing from the plan, however, a comprehensive guide on how to handle driving while impaired by marijuana. Time now for the GRE Morning Business Report on this Thursday. Greenlight Networks is hosting uh, open interviews coming up today. The company is looking for outside fiber technicians. That hiring event will be held at the Doubletree Hotel on Jefferson Road in Henrietta, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you cannot attend in person, you are encouraged to visit greenlight.com slash careers. New data showing the speed and efficacy of the Pfizer coronavirus shot. A joint study conducted in part by the Israel Institute of Technology showed two weeks after the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine was more than 91% effective at preventing infection and 99% effective at preventing symptomatic COVID. Alcohol sales falling for the first time since the pandemic began. According to data from Nielsen, alcohol sales slumping nearly 2% this month. This time last year, liquor stores were reporting alcohol sales as much as 55% higher than normal. The decline in sales could also reflect the recent reopenings of bars and restaurants nationwide. Time for news from around the state. New York's Attorney General Tish James is issuing guidance to protect stimulus payments from debt collectors. The AG notifying banks and debt collectors saying stimulus payments are exempt from garnishment under state law. In New York, certain types of property, including public benefits like public assistance and Social Security, are exempt from such garnishment. O'Shea Children's Hospital in Buffalo launching a fatherhood training program working to bring support and educational resources to new dads. The hospital says it will provide parent education, support groups, and mentoring for male caregivers. The training will instruct the new dads on labor and delivery skills, including tips on how to support their partner during labor. And I bet they have something about changing diapers in there as well. 
All right, uh, as we put a bow on our Smart Start, back to you, Josh, for another check of the forecast. Great day to take the kids uh, for a walk in the sunshine. Great day for you to enjoy the sun and some of the warmest weather imaginable for this time of year with highs into the mid-70s. That's in record high territory before a lake breeze starts up this afternoon. There's a price to pay for all of that beautiful warmth today, and it comes in the form of strong and gusty winds for tomorrow. That potential is there. High wind watches are in effect for all of Friday into Friday afternoon. Beautiful sunrise in the making at the Port of Rochester. We're going to enjoy all kinds of sunshine here through the morning. But again, clouds will gather later into the afternoon. So you want to uh, enjoy what we have while we have it today. Will do. That's it for us for now here on News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update in 30 minutes. CBS This Morning is up next. Be safe and have a great day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.